This podcast episode is brought to you by The Cry Lounge. The Cry Lounge is an independent publishing company founded by this podcast host, Bonnie Orbison. The Cry Lounge transfers your daydreams onto paper. With two book releases the past two years, they are preparing to extend their service to other authors and other creatives. To get more details and support this show, there's a link in the description you can check out. The Cry Lounge looks forward to meeting you. Welcome everybody to a very new episode of Bonnie's Legends. I'm Bonnie Oberson and this is my podcast, Bonnie's Legends. I can't believe I told you last week it would be stormy here in Germany. Today it's so hot, I wish it would be stormy. Anyway, today's guest is Marcella Cambers. I'm really proud of having her in my podcast because she's such a legend. She's a guitar player, she's a guitar teacher and she has such a beautiful journey behind herself. And yeah, I wish you fun listening. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, how are you? I'm fine too. How's the weather? It's nice. I mean, it's been pretty hot and we're getting some epic rains, but, but it's been nice. After a long winter, we enjoy the Yeah. The, it's here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Marcella Campus. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Great. Um, guitar player teacher as well what else uh well that's that's the official <laughs> and then <that is, laughs> um amateur coffee maker and a, a lot of other hobbies <laughs> but yeah no, my my main thing is everything guitar <laughs> <laughs> great i see it in the back of your room Yeah, they are all here watching over. Like, what you doing? Why do you not play me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We start with 16 random questions. I ask them every guest. Okay. What's your full name? Oh, okay. You ready? It's pretty long. <laughs> In Brazil, we have like the longest last names because it, it, it's so funny. Like the the mom and the dad. They they just they don't they don't lose any last names so they get married and then the kid just join all the last names and then it just gets like out of hand. Okay. So it's Marcela de Campos Galberto Oliveira. It's a mouthful. <laughs> That's okay. why I just go by Marcela Campos because you know sometimes like what's your last name? It's like uh which one? <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. My boyfriend's girlfriend is uh, out of prison. So maybe I should ask her. I don't yeah, know. That. You should. <laughs> When's your birthday? It's May 12. So you already had birthday this year. I already had my my first pandemic birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite color? Um, I love blue. Yeah. It's a beautiful color. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any pets? I don't. I mean, I, I had back in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a French bulldog that I'm obsessed with him. But yeah, here in New York, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Brazil, from a, a city called Belo Horizonte. Okay, great. And then you just came straight to New York or...? Uh, no, so first I went to LA. I mm -hmm. went there to study music. I stayed there for like around four years. Then I went back to Brazil. Then I lived in Mexico for a while. But my boyfriend is from Mexico, so mm -hmm. we, we stayed there for a while. And then we decided to come to New York. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little all over the place. That's fine. <laughs> Favorite food? Favorite food? Oh my god, it's so hard to choose one. I love food. Um, what would be? I think I really love this Brazilian dish. It's called stroganoff. Okay. 
something I miss and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite song or song what follows you for your whole life? Oh, what would be a favorite song? There are so many, but I guess some that really, really marked me was uh, anything from Aerosmith, like maybe Crazy was one mm -hmm. that was yeah. all through my falling in love with music, with guitar and everything. <laughs> Aerosmith is great. It's great. <laughs> It is. Favorite artist. It can be a painter, musician, actor, actress, author, everything. <laughs> oh, that's also tough because there are so many, but uh, I guess I'll go with Albert King. Okay. <laughs> Favorite film? Favorite film? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some hard ones. A Favorite film? What would be? That's really hard to choose. I don't know. I, I, I was pretty obsessed with Matrix. That could be one. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite book? Favorite book? Mm. Huh. Well, that, that I read recently and I really love was the Steve Raven biography. It was a really, really nice book <laughs> i love books <laughs> <laughs> me too what languages can you speak uh, i can speak portuguese english and spanish try to learn german for a while but uh, yeah i need to get back to that it was pretty challenging <laughs> <laughs> yeah again my boyfriend and uh, my boyfriend's <laughs> <laughs> my brother's girlfriend um oh. she teaches him portuguese and he teaches her german <laughs> that's always yeah. interesting <laughs> that's pretty cool that's kind of what happened with me and my boyfriend with the spanish and, and yeah. portuguese but it helped that i live in New mexico then i could really learn yeah <laughs> yeah i think that too what's your most used phrase or word Sorry, say that again. What's your most used phrase or word? Huh. <laughs> oh my God. What, what would be the most used phrase or word? Coffee. <laughs> my boyfriend said it's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you want a coffee? You want a coffee? <laughs> That's a nice one. That's yeah. a nice one. <laughs> yeah, I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> Um, do you still have any music on vinyl or cassettes? Vinyl? Yeah. Uh, not here. Back in Brazil, I do have a lot, but uh, here, no. Uh, we're moving around so much that it's yeah. hard to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> do you sing in the shower? Yes, like a lot. <laughs> It has a beautiful, like, ambience, like a reward. Yeah, yeah. yeah it feels so like, oh, yeah, you know, it just gets you on a groove. It's like, yeah, the tour is going to be long. <laughs> It's a vibe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing you do in the morning? Uh, <laughs> my boyfriend's here again. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is, yeah. My day only really starts after, like, I had my coffee. Okay, I'm ready for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your legend? Sorry, my what? Who's your legend? My legend? Oh. I guess there are, like, a, a handful of, like, blues musicians that are, like, my legends that I'm, I'm really obsessed with them. I was going back to learn from them. And uh, I think it would be really hard to just choose one. But uh, like I mentioned before, Albert King is a big one. And Eric Clapton and uh, mm -hmm. Scott Clapton as well. But yeah, it, it's very hard for me to choose. They are like five or six, but choose one, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm making a whole podcast of my legend, so. 
true. Yeah. But yeah, those, those three are for sure my legends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're a guitar player and teacher. When did you start playing guitar? So I started when I was like uh, 16 years old. And like we're talking before was when I heard those, those songs from Aerosmith. Mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, that's amazing. What is that? I didn't even know like what a guitar sounded like. You know, I just heard that. I was like, I want that. And that's when I started looking for a teacher and I started taking lessons and I just, you know, dived in on, on the guitar universe. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because um next week i will start t uh, playing guitar so i get my first lesson of guitar and i'm yes. almost 16 so that's <laughs> similar similarities <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah when and how did you find your passion for guitar um i guess it was somewhere over there like a uh, I, I, I took those lessons and then I kept going and I would always say that I, I wanted to be a doctor and my mom is a doctor so you know that that was not some very good news when I broke for her like you know what I'm not gonna be a doctor <laughs> I'm guitar player. Uh, so it was around that time you know that I had to choose you know a career and, and to, to join university and, and I was like no this is what I want to do you know I, I can't picture me doing anything else for the rest of my life. And that, that's when I realized it. But it took a lot of, because of mm -hmm. that, you know, of my family. There was no musicians on my family. You know, everyone was more traditional. So they didn't take it that easy. <laughs> so I ended up doing another career for four years. And, uh, and it just, you know, helped me to kind of really you know make sure like yeah you know this is cool probably maybe will be helpful but music it's what i want to do so. yeah <laughs> another simi similarity um, yeah i don't have any musicians in my family <laughs> all right so it's gonna start with you yeah first one that's okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah how is it studying guitar Sorry, how was studying? Yeah. So uh, in Brazil, I had this um, <clears throat> this teacher that he was great. He was like my, my first mentor. He walked me through all the bases and helped me so, so much because it was like from zero, zero. I didn't know anything about guitar. And then after a while, I, I, I decided I needed something more intense. And then I looked up some schools and I found this school on LA that was uh, really nice. And I had some friends that went to it. And, uh, and then there was amazing, like a really, really great experience because it was pretty much all day playing. The teachers were great. And we got to play like the bands. We had like the class when the teacher would explain. And then it was the class that we would just play with a band. But the band was just like, pro musicians you know like uh, yeah like the the drummer that played that he played for backstreet boys for christina aguilera for all those pop singers the bass player that that would play for steve Vai. that it's like a an amazing like legendary guitar player too yeah so that's really cool that we got to play like with those pro guys and that really pushes us a lot to keep you know learning and improving so that was like one of the best decisions of my life to do that <laughs> school and it really changed it and exposed me to other styles because when I started all I would listen was rock <laughs> I was obsessed with rock obsessed with the 80s and uh, in there it kind of opened up for me you know I was more exposed to blues to contemporary music to jazz to all those other styles that are mm -hmm. also so rich and have so much to offer you know so yeah it was a great great experience <laughs> What was your favorite band? Did you have like a favorite band you played with? That I played with? Yes. Uh, when I was in LA, I played with this band that we were like uh, just girls on the band and we were a cover of Led Zeppelin. Okay. That was my favorite band that I played because I love Led Zeppelin so much and was so fun to just play Led Zeppelin <laughs> all night. And the girls were great, you know, it was really really fun like my favorite gig so far I mean I love playing with my group where we 
you know, I choose the, the songs, we play my songs, we play some covers. But this was like a, a great, great experience. You have an own band? Yes, I have my own band. Yeah, we, I mean, before all this, we would gig a lot here in New York, hopefully soon. Yeah. We are able to do it again. <laughs> but yeah, I have like two projects here in New York. Uh, one, it's like my, my original project that um, we just play like my songs and it's instrumental and it's more like rock fusion oriented. And I have this other project that it's a blues band. And on mm -hmm. that one, we have a singer and we just play a, like a lot of like classic blues songs, which is a lot of fun too. I love yeah. playing blues. <laughs> I love blues. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> so your instrumentals projects are more that kind what your EP sounds like? Uh, it, it's, it's like pretty rocky. It's more heavy. You okay. Know, more heavy. And the blues project the blues it's a little lighter but the, the rocky it's more heavy has a lot of fusion but it it, it does have something too yeah yeah it's like i i have an ep it's so we play those songs that are the originals and some covers and uh yeah it's it's a little more on the heavy side but not crazy not nothing metal or no nothing. it's yeah no <laughs> More like fusion-ish and uh, lots of guitar, lots of solos. It's also a, a fun one. Yeah, it's a fun story because this morning, uh, no, it was yesterday. Was it today? No, yesterday. <laughs> Those days are a blur, I know. It's the same with me. <laughs> so yesterday morning, I got up really early because I wanted to work. And then it was like 8 a.m. I said in our garden and was like okay i listened to your ep and the first song is the morning blues is it called morning blues yeah yeah and i was like good morning <laughs> now i'm awake <laughs> nice that's the idea it's like all right i'm ready <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah nice <laughs> <laughs> do you play any yeah, other that instrument one is, that one is more on It's more bluesy, that one, the, the morning blues. So the yeah. repeat, I try to put a little of everything. So the morning blues is a little more bluesy. The unbreakable, it's more on the fusion side. Mm -hmm. um, up to 11, it's full on rocky. <laughs> uh, and driven, it's a little like funk rock. Very yeah. like hand uh, influences. <laughs> um, I wanted to say something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With the band, with the blues band you have, will you record some stuff or is it just live gigs? Uh, so far we've done so just live gigs, but that's the, the plan. Again, everything had to be moved with uh, this wonderful thing we live in. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is the plan to do a, a full record just with blues. You know, just with those blues tunes that we've been like trying in live, seeing which one works better, how it works better. And mm -hmm. the idea is to have, uh, hopefully, the end of the year or beginning of the next, depending on how things are going to go, to have the full record of the blues. Great. Does, does, your band has an, does your band have another name or is it Marcella Campus? Yeah, so far it's just Marcella Campus Project, but yeah, the blues is gonna, it's gonna need a name. <laughs> we're gonna figure out something <laughs> yeah we just started this uh our first gig was was january you know the blues the blues is it so this project is very recent yeah uh, it's been a lot of fun i i've done it with two singers that that i love from here and uh with both of with, with each of them it's a different vibe you know but <laughs> but both are really fun and, and uh The, the feedback has been really great for that because what I love most is that with that people just you know they are dancing they are enjoying themselves and I think on the end that's the idea mm -hmm. you know, that's what we want to exactly <laughs> do you play any other instruments or just guitar um well I'm learning to sing to move out from the shower <laughs> <laughs> So I'm doing some singing lessons, which I'm really loving. It's something I always wanted to, but never, you know, put it at time. So that's something I've been enjoying. And uh, I play a little of other strings, like a little bass. Mm -hmm. 
piano, sort of, but yeah, that I can play, play is guitar. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't fake my way, but it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> Do, did you start the f acoustic guitar or did you start the f electric guitar? Funny story, I I was always obsessed with electric and they would always tell me like, no, but you need to start on the acoustic and this. And I was like, mm -hmm. no, I don't want it. I don't like it. I don't want it, you know. <laughs> Any like some teachers was like okay so then I can't teach you you know when I was looking for a teacher I was like because that's how we do it I was like okay so I don't want you and then when I found that <laughs> when I found that teacher I was like fine you want electric that's fine let's start on that and then that's what I did it you know okay. I mean from a teacher point of view now I get it because it, you know on the acoustic that's where you learn your basic you learn your chords you learn rhythm you learn strumming because a lot of times when we get to the electric, we just don't like, yeah, solo, and forget all the other part, you know? Yeah. Because the electric is just so fun, that, that whole part of soloing. But I guess on the end, it, it doesn't matter as much, you know, as long as you're willing to, you know, whatever, whichever you start, you're willing to put the work, you know, not just on the fun stuff, but you <laughs> eat your veggies, you know, like, okay, you know, I don't love broccoli and this and that, but it's gonna be good for me if I do it, you know? Yeah. So if you're willing to put the work, it doesn't really matter which one you start, you're gonna do great, you know? Okay. But, yeah, but stubborn me didn't want the acoustic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I start with acoustic next week. But That's great. Yeah, but that was a funny story because my brother moved out and he he left his guitar. He never played guitar. He's not a musician. He, I think he even can read, um, how are you saying, keys? Yeah. Sorry, what? The, he like, can read the key. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I have to Google it right now. The notes. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. <laughs> So he can read notes and he kind of started learning by, him, by himself the guitar, but it didn't work out. But he bought one and he left this one here in Germany when he moved out. And some years ago, my, my dad called me. I was like, yeah, I'm going to clean up the room of your brother right now. And I'm going to throw out everything. And I was like, wait, hold on, the guitar too? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, no, 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 I take it. <laughs> It's it's them. <laughs> it's it's them. She's standing in in my room and just yeah. And now I'm saying okay, I do it. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna love it. It, it. It's so so fun. So good to okay. play. <laughs> <laughs> where are you teaching? Are you teaching by yourself or are you in a university or? So I do a lot of private lessons, but I also teach through, uh, I don't know if you heard about School of Rock. It's like a franchise. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a really cool school, you know, the, the whole concept, it, it's really nice because it's very like performance oriented. So the kids, they have like pri the private lesson, but they also mm -hmm. have <clears throat> group lessons, which they get to play on a band, you know, which is so cool and i wish i had done something like that as a kid you know yeah <laughs> because it, it's it's so exciting you know when you actually play, and they play like loud they use like the big headphones and everything but they get to play loud and with a band so yeah. it, it's really fun so now i'm doing that you know the, the school of rock but i also have a lot of private students that, that i teach on my own and uh yeah now it's being everything remote but here in New York, we are on phase three, so we are already mm -hmm. moving to getting back little by little things. <laughs> <laughs> What's important about teaching someone playing guitar? What's important? Um, I think, like like we talked before, it's important to go like uh, to the to the basis, you know, to the fundamentals. Yeah. Even though a lot of times that's not the fun thing about playing, but it's so important you know and um uh, <clears throat> but i also think it, it has to have a balance you know like i i, I never like to teach students like a song that they <laughs> never heard in their life yeah 
you know, it's not the same, you know? So I, I, I think you like, you need to work on that, but also to work on something fun, something that's going to get you excited, motivated, because you know, it, it's such a, a great feeling when you are yeah. able to play something that a lot of times and you play and it sounds the same. You're like, that's awesome. You know? Yeah. When you just start and the first time you were able to do that, it's like, ah, you know, life changing. <laughs> so I, I think that there is always that it always has to be that balance, you know, when you're teaching, you know, to give the fundamentals because you also you don't want to have holes on, on your play, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want to have all these gaps that then it, your your play is gonna fall apart when they ask something from you. But also you need to have that part, you know, of being fun, being exciting, be motivated, something that yeah. you know you want it so much that you're gonna every day put the work because you want it to sound like that. You know? Yeah. So, what was your li- first live gig ever? My first live gig ever. I was back in Brazil. Well, well I mean, I don't know if I can consider that one. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. I, because in Brazil, I did a lot of, like, a lot of, like, church that I don't really consider mm-hmm. that as, like, gigs, gigs, I guess. <laughs> the most ones were in LA that were some with, with that band that I was telling mm-hmm. you and some actually I played a lot with also a German singer that we would do a lot of like acoustic gigs that was like some of my first gigs right out of of, uh, of music school we would do a lot of like acoustic I was play acoustic for her and she was singing we did a lot of like coffee shops <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Yeah, they they started to blur, you know. But I think like with a band, and now one of the first ones was those uh, of the Led Zeppelin in LA. That was uh, I had to learn lots of songs in a very short period, and I was very nervous, but it <laughs> turned out good. <laughs> How's the name of the German singer you mentioned? Maybe you uh, know her, Catherine Jacob. She still lives in LA. Okay. Yeah. She sings no. really nice. Yeah. yeah, you can look her up. You're going to find her. She she started, lately she was doing a bunch of yodo. So you're probably going to find a bunch of videos of her yodo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we did a lot like of coffee shop. We played uh, some festivals and uh, it was fun. It was fun. She sings really nice. <laughs> <laughs> what? was your best live gig my best live gig um i think it was actually the last gig before everything stopped you know it was like a a really fun one and it was the first time that i, I played with one of the singers that we do the the blues project and it's the one that i was trying and trying but we would never work the schedule and was the first time that we were able to do it and it was really fun I, I guess it was the best one yeah <laughs> we were so excited and plenty more and then like oh <laughs> yeah but then you take it for more credit afterwards then sorry so you take it then for credit afterwards after all this stuff wow, to play yeah. life again yeah that's never never taking that for granted anymore because yeah now after so long it's always you know, <laughs> that was a great thing when we were able to do it yeah it, it feels <laughs> pretty unreal to not be able to do it for so long but <laughs> yeah <clears throat> it's more planned like an ep of your own sorry uh it's it's more planned than an EP of your own. So the album with the blues band, but also something instrumental thing. Oh, that it's coming. Yeah, the next thing would be the, the full uh, blues album. But yeah, eventually I want to do the full album of the other project to the instrumental and more rocky. That's also on the plan. <laughs> <clears throat> um how is the process of recording a guitar? Of the record? Yeah. So it's a project. <laughs> yeah. 
um, it's a lot more uh, steps than I thought. You know, when I when I did the AP, it was it was the first time ever I done it. So yeah, it it takes a lot. I mean, first you need to, of, of course, like have the songs, yeah, <laughs> have the written all the the arrangements, everything, and then you know you need to have your musicians to know your musicians and you need to have all your charts written out well everything you want because you know <laughs> that's what they're gonna play you know what's written there and <clears throat> then you need to go to the studio we did we did separate so first we did drums and then we did bass then I recorded all my guitars and uh yeah so after that then comes the mix which is also you know, like the first mix, I hated so much that I, I almost wanted to throw everything away and just do everything over, you know, because it was just not what I wanted. Then I had to take everything to another guy and we sat down and we did together, like uh, this is cruciating, is low process, like for every song until we got, okay, this is what we want, you know. But it was yeah. all like a learning process because it was the first time I did, you know, and I didn't really have anyone that had done before. Like, oh, no, you need to do that. And, you know, yeah. So it was all, I guess, was longer because it was, there was this learning curve happening yeah. there. So after you have all the audios ready, then you need to take care of the whole, like, okay, so how I want it. Do I want a digipack? How many I want it? What I want inside? What are the pictures I'm gonna use? Which is gonna be who's gonna be my designer? Who's gonna do the cover? So all that, and then mm -hmm. where I'm gonna press? How many I'm gonna press? Where I'm gonna put a label online? Am I gonna use Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer? So there's so much involved, yeah. with, you know. That <laughs> you don't really think about it until you're actually doing, you know. So it's it's a lot, but it's very interesting, and I enjoy it you know, learning about all that, which I'm sure it's going to make so much easier for my next one. Because then yeah. I have like, okay, I know this guy can do a good mix. I know this mm -hmm. is a good way to do my, to press my record. And all that, I guess, just gets better with time. But the first one, it's a little, ah, you know, <laughs> so much to do with and a little frustrating. But when you finally, you know, I, I remember like today, the day I went on the place and I pick it up, the boxes, and I open, I open the first one, you know, oh. it was unreal, you know, it was <laughs> like, I can't believe you're here, you know, yeah. it took so long, so this, this is actually, you know, I think the best part, you know, we find it like, okay, you know, there was a, some resistance, some pushing back, but I did it, here it is, you know, my first record. Yeah, I'm experiencing I'm experiencing this right now too because I'm self-publishing my first book after oh, one and a half year or two years now, and it's like sizing every like having the right size. This and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, hang in there, push through it because yeah, you know, we deal with a lot of stuff that we kind of break our head like ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. God, you know why it's so complicated but on the end when you have that on your hand the first one you're like did it you know yeah I await that, that moment <laughs> yeah yeah it's gonna come you know and they, it's great you know everything is, is it's learning you know so the yeah. next ones it's gonna be easier and just you know we start knowing better the steps yeah and which takes to don't do and then exactly. it's just gonna be you know a shorter process eventually hopefully <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah mm -hmm. for example by sizing the script I was like okay now I know that I need for the first time for this job maths <laughs> yeah yeah and then you realize those those kind of things you know like okay so I really need to know this yeah and these are some skills that are I need to have because they're gonna come so handy you know yeah, yeah that's good it's it's part of it that's the only way that we know that we need that stuff you know exactly <laughs> Great, yeah how's new york right now uh well right now it's so much better you know like outside there is already a lot of people we we just enter on phase three on monday and uh but the only thing they're holding back is the dining inside so it's still mm -hmm. dining outside but they they 
kind of put the tables outside and people are actually, you know, going out and it feels more relaxed, you know, because yeah. like on, and around like May, you would go outside and you'd feel this like a uh, fear on the air, yeah. you know, and the streets so empty and, mm -hmm. and, you know, New York is super safe, but a lot of times I would like, no, let's not go out at night. I mean, we wouldn't go out, but you know, if you need to buy groceries or whatever, yeah. let's not do anything at night because it was not feeling that good. Yeah. You know? But right now it feels like it's kind of like people are relaxing and kind of like, okay, you know, that's it. Okay. Of course, you know, <laughs> it's, it's uh, getting better, but it's still there. We still need to be careful. We still need to wear our masks, mm -hmm. but you know, life needs to to go mm -hmm. on you know? things needs to move so it's it's getting better and I'm, I'm hoping that you know it just keeps getting better and not only here everywhere because like my country now it's kind of bad Brazil yeah. is starting to to spread a lot but uh, yeah I mean I think we, we passed through the worst which like April and May were mm -hmm. really bad and like yeah, like unreal. <laughs> it's like I never <laughs> ever thought that, you know, I would see New York like that, you know, like so empty and everything closes and very weird. Yeah. Some some now, people said that it looks some people said that it looks looked like a ghost town. It did, it did. Like I, I never never seen before, you know. It's like weird, very weird, you know, the city I always had like so much life on it and you know we I was walking and kind of pushing tourists get off my way you know <laughs> yeah but I was so flooded with everyone and you're like running here and there and they are on the way taking pictures but that's the cool thing of here you know that sometimes when we live here we kind of like ah! but we miss it on these times <laughs> yeah but, uh, yeah it was like weird you know the streets so so empty and now you would hear all day it's ambulances in and out in and out so thank god now we see more life more people outside and uh you know the and we feel so bad for you know the the business owners so i'm yeah. glad the restaurants are starting to pick up and things going and the other day i was passing and i saw lines outside like zara and maces are like okay things are getting back because people <laughs> are making lines to enter <laughs> zara and maces okay <laughs> <laughs> so yeah thank god it looks like it's getting better now we're just like praying and hoping that we can play live gigs again yeah because you know? i think that's phase four and uh, Hopefully we're close to that. We all miss. That's one of the things that I would love more about New York. You know, that there was like live music every day mm -hmm. of the week. You, know, you go out Monday and there is like amazing musicians on at least three or four clubs playing, you know. And any day of the week that you wanted to see a live gig, you would go. But it's not just a no one, you know, like a big, yeah. amazing. And uh, yeah, now that's all gone. So that's one thing that I'm really hoping we can come back to. <laughs> yeah. How long do you live now in New York? It's been two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> what were your favorite places to go before that happened? <laughs> oh, here on New York? Yeah. Um, I love going to the park. I really love Central Park because you know there's just this peace about it you know when, when you go it's always has this kind of cleanse effect you know you go and sometimes you're with your mind so full of things and you go and so much nature you're kind of like okay kind of <laughs> you. and you know it, it's great because the park is so big and sometimes if you take a, a different way you end up on a place that you've never seen before and yeah and it changes so much you know with the seasons like uh, you know after the winter I went I think on, on May for the first time again because I was so like oh god I need to get out of the house for at least a little bit I was going crazy <laughs> and it you know was the after months of seeing you know the the trees bare and everything was like green and the flowers was like, <laughs> change, you know so it, it's really awesome to watch you know this change of seasons which yeah. is something 
find really cool. So the park, it's a place I love. I love, uh, you know, the music clubs, like I was saying, you know, that they are all kind of around the village. So mm -hmm. I, I love that area, you know, because you can just breathe, you know, the, the music <laughs> in there. And uh, where else? Ah, there's so many great places. I love going around also like Bryan Park that I found it so pretty and it's always changing also, you know, with the seasons. <laughs> um, I love the bridge, you know, like the, yeah. I usually Brooklyn and we would cross a lot the Williamsburg Bridge and that area around, you know, like Brooklyn Heights that you can kind of see that whole landscape. I love yeah. it. I mean, there's just endless, amazing places on the city. And, um, yeah, I can't wait for it to be back at his full, you know, so we can enjoy it all again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dave Stewart follows you on Instagram. Who? Dave Stewart. He does? Yeah. Oh, my God, I didn't know. I love <laughs> Really, I, I did not know. Does he really? Wow, that's amazing. I love him. I, I have to, oh. Yeah, I think I saw that. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> wow, how I didn't see that. Yeah, followed by Dave Stewart or Ruth Mix. Oh my God, that's amazing. Can you? Hold on. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. Wow, you made my day. <laughs> He's amazing. I love him. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> I would, so the so question is, how was your erection? <laughs> I think I had that right now. <laughs> He's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I got his book. I really love the guy. I find him incredible. And so, yeah. you know, he has such a creative and innovative mind. Yeah. He's, so. And now the Stuart Lindsay. I'm so excited for the new album. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bluesy, I think. So blues and <sighs> yeah, uh, he's awesome. Do you want to walk with him? Want what? Do you want to walk with him? Walk with him? Oh my god, that would be like a dream. A dream. <laughs> He worked with a lot of, of the of girl musicians that I love. You know, he worked with Oriente, that it's like the queen for me. Mm -hmm. You know, she's incredible guitar player. She's so 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 good. And uh, he worked also with uh, Joanne Shaw Taylor, that it's a a, a British uh, blues guitar player. That it's also incredible. So yeah, that would be <laughs> amazing. Amazing it would be such an honor to work with someone like him. Yeah. Who would be your favorite collab or co-partner to? Oh, dead or alive? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, I don't know. There are so many that would be amazing. And, uh, you know, And I did with one that was one of my wildest dreams, you know, on that EP, the Scott Anderson. He mm -hmm. plays on all the tracks. And I mean, I'm, I'm so obsessed with him. He's such an amazing player. And he had such a huge influence on me. And that was one that was on, on like bucket list for me. And uh, it's still, I still don't believe that it happened. So he was one. And I don't know, I think another one that, I mean, it's, it would be a very dreaming land, but would be incredible. Would be Eric Clapton. That is another that you know, so so amazing. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> What are your plans for today? My day is over, but yeah. your day just started. Or just started. Oh yeah, we are on a huge <laughs> time zone difference, right? So today after this, I have a, I give a bass lesson. I have a bass student. And right after her, I have my singing lesson. That, that one I'm actually learning, not giving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm doing that on Wednesdays, which is a very exciting part of my day because I'm, I'm very, very excited with the, the singing lessons. 
and after that it's practicing yeah yeah so how long are you practicing every day Hi. sorry you froze say that again <laughs> how long are you processing no hold on how long are you practicing every day <laughs> um so it depends depends of the day but usually i i try to do at least two hours every day wow yeah i wouldn't have the patience for that <laughs> uh you would it, it just now it passed so fast you know that yeah but of course you build up you know like when you start playing then you do very little and then over the years you start kind of putting more and then you have so much more to work on that the time just you know it <laughs> flows away yeah it's like oh okay but yeah it's i mean it's not set on stone but usually it's at least that you know if i'm able to do more awesome but if not that's the kind of the minimum that i need to what would you what what advice would you give would you give your 16 year old self um uh so many <laughs> but yeah you know I, I would say to just you know to be patient to be less tough with yourself you know to just enjoy the process you know because you know like music i'm i've been playing since i'm 16 and i'm still learning every single day and i'm gonna be you know until the day I die, because music is just endless, you know, there is always something else that you're like, oh, I never worked on that, so, mm -hmm. you know, there is, there is always more, and on, when I, I was younger, I would get sometimes too frustrated and too desperate, like, ah, I've been playing for so long, why I can't do that yet, you know, <laughs> so that's one thing, like, that I would, you know, the advice that I would give to my younger self, and that I give to my students sometimes, you know, that was like, don't get frustrated you know just enjoy the process be patient with yourself put the work that needs to be put but you know without without too much you know uh, collapsing of not being able to do it. it's okay it's part of it it's a learning process and you're gonna get better you know every day if you put the work there is no way that you're not getting better you know <laughs> i think that's a great war for the end <laughs> yes <laughs> it was great i loved it thank you me too great talking to you thank you too <laughs> <laughs> all right then have a great have great lessons <laughs> thank you <laughs> and a nice day and yeah thank you. you too good luck with the book i want to read it when it's ready <laughs> yeah so the channel version will come out next next week <laughs> nice and i have to translate it it's in german i have to translate it so i'm working on that oh, too cool. nice <laughs> but i will give you the date when when the translation yeah. will come out <laughs> yeah please do so that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> okay great then bye all right bye <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Marcella Campos. It was so, so beautiful. And yeah, my guitar lessons. Uh, that's another story. I actually thought about, um, I thought about asking Marcella. Hmm. Maybe I will text her afterwards. Anyway, I wish you a lovely, 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 lovely week. And we see us next week again for another legend and... Me, Bonnie Arbersam. Bye.